Hey everyone, welcome to Gray Man Prepping. Uh, uh, this is Tactical Tuesday, and we're going to be talking a little bit about tactics, gear, and more. The tactics have our, our, our tactics and what we're going to be talking about tonight. So uh, let's get at it here. Tonight's topic is basically the status of your prepper pantry. What is it? And if you read in the description a little bit, you'll talk. I'm you realize I'm talking more than what I you think I am. So let's get back over here and hey everyone, how's it going? All right, before we jump in here, I uh, would just like to say one thing. It has cooled off to 95 degrees here at eight o'clock in the evening <laughs> in Idaho. Man, it's hot. My uh down where my wife is in California, 111 today. It's supposed to be 114 tomorrow. So um but I'm going to be going over all that stuff on Thursday on uh, uh, the midnight ride with uh, Gray Man Prepping. Talk about all the, uh, the weather stuff going on across the country. But tonight, I just want to uh, talk about food and stuff with you guys. But first, let's see who else is in here. First one in showing up was uh, CR, Creative Redundancy, my friend from north of the border. Uh, Carol's driving and listening. She's uh, hopefully going to get home and get up here. Uh, it's uh, Fishers and Loaves Life. Uh, Gear Grinding 19 is in here. Uh, where to Begin Homestead is here. And everybody's talking already. I mean, the conversation is just going on on here. I mean, it's like, it was great just watching everyone talk uh, beforehand. Um, and and did, a, uh, did their yearly pantry run today. Way to go, Where to Begin Homestead. And let's see here. Uh, how to Garden, Glenn, how are you doing? Let's see who else. I know I'm going to miss somebody here. And I froze. Uh, hey, Barry. Storms, radios, and cats is in the house. Joe, Garden State Gardener. Super Scott is here. Teresa and Lee, Stringfield Ridge Farm. Uh, run on down here. Uh, Brenda, 1900 Homestead. How's it going? And I'm trying to get caught up here. And uh, the, num the numbers just keep on. Everyone's talking. I love it. Uh, Ben's, Ben's over acres. Welcome. And everyone's chit chatting. Vitra, how's it going? And uh, wow, it jumped a lot there. <laughs> okay, who else is sneaking here? Suburban Hillbilly. CB at Hugo Homestead. Mary Beth Smith. Hey. Home, uh, Homestead Aquarius. Hey, Robert. And let's get going down here, trying to keep everyone just talking. Prep for eternity. How's it going, uh, Donnie? And we're getting down here. I think I'm getting close back to the beginning. Everyone's just talking. There's a lot of people talking in here. And that's the way it should be. Everyone should be uh, uh, working with each other. And it's Howie, Food Forest Permaculture. He's put out a couple of great uh, videos today up there uh, in his little island up, up there off the west coast of Canada. All right, and the Jewish Redneck Prepper, how's it going? And, man, i just trying to catch up here. It's just, okay, I think I caught up. All right, I caught up. Woohoo! <laughs> All righty. So um, what am I talking about tonight for uh, the status of your prepper pantry? Well, generally, um, most of my life, we've had two pantries. We've had the pantry in the kitchen, and then we had a pantry outside of the kitchen. And so what we do is the pan pantry in the kitchen is what we call the working pantry or the kitchen pantry. The other pantry was the, um, the storage pantry, or in this case, the prepper pantry. And it's where you put, you know, you put stuff there and then you move from there into the working pantry when the working pantry gets low. And when you move something in, then you add it to the shopping list. And that way you always keep, you know, you always wind up refilling the, um, the storage pantry or the prepper pantry. And the working pantry can never run low because there's the other one to go from. So we're going to be kind of talking about a little bit about both and some of the um, strengths and drawbacks here. So let me get the... Uh, PowerPoint up here. 
There we go. And let me go ahead and uh, move into it here. I know we all would love to have uh, a um, prepper pantry like this, where you got a lot, you know, you got, you know, everything stored in there and not just food too. You know, they got the toilet paper up on top, paper towels. They've got um, laundry detergent stuff down on the bottom, fabric softener, cleaning stuff. So this is, this is a basically a storage room type pantry. And so, yeah, uh, see, it's like having a mini grocery store at home. <laughs> All right. So, you know, this, this is an another one here where people have all the, you know, the shelves up and this, you know, you, this one here, you see they, they haven't spent a lot of money on shelves. They get shelves where they can and they use them. You know, they spend the money on the food and they get the shelves on the cheap. So, and of course, this 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 looks uh, screams of garage to me, which is uh, can be a, a really good deal if you don't if you don't have to worry about parking your cars indoor all the time. And you know this one here, you can tell they're just starting out, getting it going. This one and sim similar ones to this one pop up all. The time when I do when I when I try to search, you know, prepping a prepper pantry or working pantries. Up. To me, this pantry is fluff. It's for show. It's not really useful. You see how small these cubbies are? Unless your your stuff fits exactly, and if you have a big package of like toilet paper or paper towels, you got to break it down to store it. And there's a lot of wasted space back in here on these shelves because the shelves are so narrow. The cubbies are so narrow. You can't really use make use of it, all right? But the only thing good about it is, this, in this type of a working pantry, uh, off throws uh, that's off the kitchen. You know they do they can do prep work in here. They got a couple little refrigerators in here. They got a sink in here. So yeah, they can do things in here. And and this style, just at the shelves, in my in my humble opinion, suck. This one's a little bit better. Uh, it's got the rolling um, ladder so you can get around and get, get up to the high shelves, get stuff down. You know, it looks like they got some sort of oven in here on this one, but still, you know, to, to me, this is, you know, the, 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 the shelves are still too narrow for me. Uh, these cubbies, especially back here. And there's a, to me, there's a bit of wasted space. I mean, they're very shallow in a, in a room that doesn't need to be shallow. And uh, let's see, where's the button here? Get going to go on the next one here. Here's a real narrow one. Okay. Now, this type pantry here, this is also where they store the uh, appliances they can't keep in the kitchen because they probably keep the shelves in the kitchen full. They got the blender down below here, got the coffee maker, got a toaster oven, got the, um, I'm not sure if that's a, a Instapot or one of those electric. Um, I just lost it. Um, uh, ro ro just, uh, roasting oven things or whatever. They got electrical uh, appliances down here. They do have some cool drawers. I'm not sure what's in the drawers, but it could be cool. But looking at the at the at the wall here on the um, on the left one, the right wall here, these drawers where my cursor is moving up and down pull out. That is cool. That makes it easier to get at the stuff. So. Um, you know, they store their pots up here. But if I had pots like that, I'd have the pots all stacked together and save space. But that's just me. Another one they got, they got all their, they got a lot of their appliances down here and big pots down on the bottom here. But I know a lot of us can't afford, you know, pantries like this. Sometimes, hey, we just got to take a closet and take the closet, throw some shelves in it. And make an extra pantry. Hey, Tibor, how's it going? Hey, Kaylin, welcome, welcome. And so, like, you can take a, a, a uh, closet and you can put a lot of shelves in there and you get a lot of storage out of a closet. Also, I know, like, companies like IKEA make um, these space saver cabinets that you can put, up, put together yourself, put up. 
in, uh, in your uh, in your kitchen. If your refrigerator sticks out and it's just sitting against the wall, you can remodel around it and put in um, uh, cabinets like this where you can actually pull it, you know, pull it out and you get to all the supplies that are in it. Now, sometimes they have cabinets, you know, you know, they have uh, you know, all the little cabinets. Um, we're, we've been thinking about remodeling and taking out a lot of the little kitchen cabinets and making a big cabinet like this. But see the doors on it close and then the doors themselves also have shelves in it. So you get access to everything in the kitchen. Now, if you're, if you're cramped for space, this is a cool idea. And um, for the one on the left there, all it is is just a shelf wide enough for cans to be on behind where the door would open up into a, a closet, a laundry room, whatever, you know, some room where you got on the wall there, you'd normally have wasted space where the door opens up, but it's, it's like three, four inches deep. Well, you put up some shelves and you can put a lot, I mean, you know, put a lot of food in there and you can see exactly what you got. If you have on the one on the right, they did the same thing at the end of this, of the little, uh, looks like they took a walk-in closet and turned it into a pantry. And so you just add in, you get more shelf space on the end without losing access to the stuff in the corners on the big shelves. Really cool. Hey, Raquel at Cottonwood Ranch. How you doing? <coughs> It's Patty and Mac at Southern Blessed Homestead. Hey guys. All right, so um, so narrow shelves can go around in a lot of spaces, and expand your um, pantry to all over the house. Um, here's another example where they had uh, minimal space and they just uh, put. Uh, the can racks up like this so they get you know first in first out on the cans that way they don't they are always um now the one on the right i've shown before i think it was last year and uh something you know easy to make yourself and you know yeah it's easy to do uh one of the things that i've noticed uh, uh from the one on the right to the one on the left you know how, how much, notice how much wider the boards are in front holding cans in. You don't have to see as much as the cans as you do on the one on the right. That way it allows you to put different size cans. You don't have to have it all exactly to the right size of the can. If it's a little narrow, it still will stay in there. These boards over here, these boards over here will keep it in there. And this is something you can, you can make easily and you can toss it up anywhere. And you don't have to do a lot of them at once. You can just do one this month. Next month or the following month, do another one, put it up. Really cool, neat ideas for uh, expanding your food storage uh, ability. All right, this I thought was really cool. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, homes they'll have the you know the narrow drawers you can pull out. It looks like they replaced it with some wide drawers, and this where it looks really cool because um, you got all your spices in here. You open it up, it's easy to see. You're not filling up a cabinet up above with all your spices and stuff and trying to figure out, you know, all right, where did I put the dill? Where is the jalapeno powder? It's all right there. And they got these uh, great little containers. They mark them. And then they got the, the, met, the metal tins here in front with other stuff in it, and it's labeled too. All right, I put a mark on, uh, 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 no, a do not do mark on this. What's wrong with this picture, guys? I'm gonna give you guys in the side chat a couple minutes, uh, you know, minutes here, seconds here, whatever, to tell me what's wrong with this picture. And while you guys are thinking about that, Carol, I agree. Um, yeah, I was going around uh, pulling some pictures. I went out, got on Pinterest, like, oh, I got to get back to, you know, because it started diverting me like a, like a squirrel to, you know, oh, wait a minute, over here. Oh, this is, you know, and it just leads you off to different things. Oh, you're getting close. Uh, see, ah. All right. 
No, not exactly. Ah, CR finally got it. No date. Here's the date written on it. If you're going to have it someplace where you got to see the top of it only, make sure you have the date on there. And you got to decide what date you're going to put on there. The date you bought it or the date, the best used by date that's on the can. Some people don't like to put down the date they, they, um, they uh, bought it. Um, that way they know, and because they do put the same date, like when they can the jars and stuff, they put the date they can it. That way they know that that's their starting date from when it was added to their supplies. So, but that's up to you whether you want to put the, uh, the date you got it or the uh, best used by date. But uh, I really don't like stuff like this, you know, personally. But it's, hey, it's up to you. Whatever works best for you is what you, you know, to do. All right. So let's go to the next one here. This I thought was real cool. They had some shelves that were built in, and they really couldn't adjust them. But they uh, took uh, uh, scrap lumber, and they made tiers so they could see what was behind. And so um, this is kind of cool. I would have added another tier to this uh, this uh, middle shelf here because that way you, you're, you're losing, you know, four inches or so on the front. But, you know, this is a, a, an option to take what you shel shelving you have and make it more, what's the word, not user-friendly, but user-friendly, but it's more um, inventory control-friendly. All right. Uh, Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Tibor has a uh, something here. Just remember to keep watch while on factory cans that touched a uh, metal cans that reacted to each other and started to leak from the rims. And he said wax paper uh, seems to fix that problem. Yeah. Especially if you have you know, if you have different type cans like this, you have uh, Campbell soup, carnation can, and some tamale soups, and you know from different manufacturers. There can be different um, alloys in the cans, and they can react. Yeah. All right. And Oh, no dented cans. If you get the cans home, they're not dented or anything, and you're moving around and you accidentally dent one, does it mean it's bad? No. It means move me to the front of the pile now. <laughs> so if you, if you dent a can, move it to the front of the pile to use. Exactly, uh, Teresa. I you know I don't I don't like the pop top cans because where that pop top uh, indentation is, it's thinner, and that's where it can is more likely to fail. Okay, let me move it on here. Got some good things going on there. Okay, all right. Um, Shelves. They took. It looks like they. Uh, they use. Um, if you, uh, you, you have to blow this up to see it. But under the ring, of, uh, the, uh, the the uh, the rings here on the left here, you can see where my cursor is moving barely. Um, for the shelves, they use molding, you know, door jam molding and stuff on there to hold the shelves up. And this is a homemade shelf shelving system. And so they use the door jam molding to hold the shelves up, three quarter inch plywood. The only thing I don't like about this, and I've mentioned it numerous times in other live streams, both on my channels and other people's channels, I don't like jars on open shelves like this because I'm from California. California has a lot of earthquakes. And also, most of the houses I've lived in California have been with fair distance of either a freeway or railroad tracks, and you get vibration from the trains going by and the trucks on the freeway. And so you can get stuff vibrating to the edge and falling off. I do like the fact that they put all their canning stuff down on the bottom shelf. Keep the canning uh, jars and everything together. They also like the fact that once they have a used jar, they turned it upside down on the shelf to keep it clean. All right. Um, Here's another homemade one where they use uh, two-by material, some nice thick shelves, never going to do anything. 
But once again, I would like something across the front to keep jars from falling out. But they built a little shelf, you know, a unit in a closet, it looks like, or somewhere. So they got um, all their, you know, canning stuff in there for, you uh, know, on steady um, shelves. All right. Here's one of the options that I like. In fact, this is on my shelf right over here. All right. I put the pasta jars, sauce jars in a box from either Costco or Sam's Club, and it can't bounce off the shelf. But you can just reach in and you can tip the jar and pull it right out. And this works really good. My daughter has a bunch of the stuff down on her shelves now where she put the, the, can, the jars she's canned and bought from the store in boxes like this so they can't fall over, even if we get a, a, <coughs> a major earthquake here. And then here's a couple of size, you know, other type boxes in there. You've got this, the, the boxes that you, you buy uh, if you go like to someplace like Winco or one of those where you can buy an entire flat of box, of uh, cans at one time. Yeah, you just keep the flat and you, you know, put stuff in it. And once again, um, boxes from uh, Sam's Club here that I put the, uh, the uh, tomato sauce jars in. Now. We're going to get into, hey, Shadow Scout, how's it going? Kathy D, welcome, welcome. Did I miss anybody else while I was looking off to the side there? Okay. Um, these plastic shelf units, I have several of them, but I've noticed a problem with them. The problem is, all right, I'll pick this one that has all the tuna on it, all the can and stuff. I can see already that shelf is starting to bow both in from the sides and from the ends. So it's bowing two directions down. Uh, and in a year or so, it's really going to be bad. Actually, not even a year, it's going to be bad. Uh, for those of you who have seen, following my, uh, my other channel, the, the Indoor Garden Experiment over on Camp Patton Family Compound, I have a couple of uh, shelves like this that I have pots sitting on. But I've also put a sheet of plywood on there because even with the small pots of uh, soil that I was growing stuff on, it started to bow almost within a week. And so I put a piece of plywood on there to stop that. And so these plastic shelves, the best thing for these plastic shelves, paper goods. Napkins, Kleenex, paper towels, toilet paper really lightweight stuff bags of chips you want to store some bags of chips use it on use these type shelves for that type stuff all righty um yeah i got T uh, uh, cb says uh toilet paper um uh, t-board just doesn't like them all at all so yeah so there's a uh you you know even with these cheap plastic ones you can if you put the right things on it you can use them don't put the heavy, heavy stuff, the 55-pound bags of rice and beans on these shelves. That's a recipe for disaster. Oh, yeah, cereal, lightweight, puffed wheats and stuff like that. Yeah. All right, uh, let's go to the next one here. Oh, I hate these. Whoever invented, the, invented this shit needs to be taken out and horsewhipped. I've heard on some of the different blogs heard people do nothing but complain about these after six months. These um, brackets here, they grab hold of the, the edge, the little glass edge lip there where you screw down, the lid down to. And number two, you don't leave the rings on. You don't leave the rings on, on, on jars. Now, so basically, these are being held by just a little bit of the glass on each side. Plus, if you um, like down to the bottom, these carrots down here, you know, these these big big jars, half gallon jars, that's a lot of weight. Those brackets are going to start to spread a little bit. Also, they're going to start to lean forward. And when they start to lean forward, what happens with the slightest vibration? The jar goes whoop and falls off. Do not let anybody talk you into using these. I've heard nothing 
but negative reviews on these. I've yet to hear one good long-term positive review on it. All right, this is not as bad. I just don't like this. Um, and I'm going to explain why. These tubs at first, I go, oh, cool idea. And then I realized, oh, crap. To take, you, know, you, you load it up, and you take a can out, you put more cans in. The ones on the bottom don't get, get, don't get rotated. Or to rotate them, you got to take all the cans out and make sure you're putting them back so the newest ones are on the bottom first. And every couple months or so, you got to rotate the, you got to pull each one of those bins out and rotate the food on it. Bit of a waste of uh, time. It'd be better to come up with a different way of doing it. All right. And the, pic, the, the, little, the comments that were with this picture, look at these cute little things. They're great for your storage. You can just turn the trays and see what you got. And you're wasting three quarters of your space. Yeah, you're, you, know, you look at it, how much space is being wasted. All right. Yeah. You know, the ones where they had the, the tiers that I showed earlier, where you stack things on, on tiers going up, that would work a lot better in there than that. All right. Let's go to the next one here. All right. That's it. I wrapped it up, I think. Yeah. That's it. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's in the end of that. So um, let me go ahead and do this. All right, so there's the link for you know, any of the uh, any of your good friends out there that want to come up here and share your experiences on this. But there's a lot of things to consider here, and I'm going to change it up when, when in case waiting for someone else to come up here. For a new person, the plastic shelves may be the way to go because they don't have much. You know, they're, they're starting now; they're having to buy shelves and food. The, those big wide shelves, are, they're um, two foot wide and 36 inches long. So two foot by three foot. Yeah, those, those do sag. And you can't really put a lot of weight on them. You can get some other ones that are um, uh, the wire ones, a little bit smaller. Um, and those work pretty good. You can get those like at a Wally World, uh, Target, and other stores like that. And... You're not going to get a lot on there, but you got a wire rack shelf that is sturdy, froze, that can take some weight being stacked on it. Uh, yeah, um, and we had one house had a lazy Susan in the kitchen in the corner, and my mom would get so pissed at it because, you know, she so get in a hurry or what I get one of us in down there, get grab something, and we'd give it a little spin and things would fly off in the back where you, you know, got to take everything out to get to it. After a while, she just had us take it out. It was like, no, this, you know, this is not worth it. All right. Um, For ba basic stuff, uh, we saw on a lot of these shelves and stuff um, in there, there were a lot of uh, canned goods from the store. There were canned goods that people made. There were uh, some, some of the cans had pop tops. Some you know, didn't. Some of the stuff there, I was kind of shocked at the, the amount of a certain type of food they had. Like the art, right, the one that had, on the plastic shelves had all that tuna. Unless those people are eating a can a day, you know, basically most people that I know of, and correct me if someone out there does, does more, I just like a can of tuna, that's a can a week. Because you got a can of tuna, you got the canned chicken, you got the canned beef, you got the canned pork, you got spam, you got a lot of things, and you're only going to eat a can of each one a week at the most. And so that much. Uh, that many cans of tuna, they had probably, I know, I, I'm thinking 100 cans of tuna there on that one shelf. And that's, that's, that's two years of tuna at least, if not more, on that shelf. Oh, yeah, you're right, canned can turkey. <clears throat> and so 
you when you're doing your your pantry you want to kind of balance it to what you use um if you have a friend who's going to be a beginner prepper and we kind of talked about this a little bit last thursday on the midnight ride what advice would you give to a new prepper or a new person who just wants to enlarge their, their supplies they don't want to be called a prepper they just want get more food in the house because they they're getting tired of going to store and finding shortages on certain things <coughs> hey granny goose okay uh they can be cheaper than other shelving units made of plastic etc yeah i know um what i like the difference between costco and sam's club the six foot a wire shelves that are four foot wide 18 inches deep um costco right now is ten dollars cheaper but they don't have the plastic liners to set on top of the shelves to keep your jars from falling over so um to me the ten dollars is well worth getting those six shelf liners so you don't have to worry about crap falling over and if you toss other loose stuff up there you don't have to worry about it falling through the, the wire shelves on it <clears throat> all right um Hey, PJ Williams. I know when we used to do a can of tuna, my mom would mix it up and would make sandwiches for the three boys. So three of us had one can of tuna. And she'd probably do that once a week. So, but, uh, yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't eat a full can of tuna at a sitting. I just don't. I, you know, I love tuna, but I just don't eat that much because I, you know, I mix it up with stuff and use it on different things. All right. Um, if a person is going to be starting their prepping and you want to give them advice as far as, you know, for how to do their, do their shelves and stuff, first thing to do, tell them, get a notebook, go through your, 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 your shelves right now and write down everything you have. That way they can see what it is they have and then keep track of what they're using. Basically as they cook dinners, write down what they had each day of the week for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So they can create, by the end of the month, they can create a one-month menu. That will give them a good idea of what they use the most of. Um, I can tell you, in our family, we used a lot of ground beef. My wife would buy the, uh, the one-pound frozen chubs in the package of five at Costco, and we always kept two or three of those in the chest freezer at all times, minimum. Uh, because, you know, we'd have a uh, cheesy enchilada hamburger helper one night. We'd have spaghetti and meat sauce. Throws spaghetti and meat sauce another night. We would do um, uh, Salisbury steak hamburger helper, um, crunchy taco. We do, you know, sometimes we do hamburger helper three nights a week, different ones, different flavors changed it up a little bit for us. <clears throat> and Tibor has a suggestion here, so I'm going to throw it up for everybody here. Yeah. And if, but if you can't, you know, if you're not going to get a bundle deal, if you can't afford a bundle deal, Keep your eyes open for the sales because um, some of the, the rack systems, well, they used to go on sale all the time. Now, you know, with all the crap going on, it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, Doreen. Okay. My oldest son didn't like a lot of stuff. He, there were only a couple of them he liked until my wife started experimenting and brought him into the kitchen and had him help make them to his taste. And so basically, um, we still have some of the uh, hamburger helper in boxes that, you know, all everyone in the family likes. But then she's made stuff that's a lot cheaper, of the, even of the stuff that we do like. Uh, she made the um, cheesy enchilada powder for it. And it's just, you know, tastes almost exactly the same. And it costs like you know, a fifth of what it does to buy the stuff from, you know, to buy the box of a uh, cheese enchilada. And so she makes that stuff, you know, makes that, some of that stuff at, you know, enjoy pa package it in jars and stuff so we can use it at home. But uh, 
Yeah, finding something that uh, a uh, hamburger casserole, whatever that he likes. Chili Mac, believe it or not, started out as macaroni and cheese and a can of chili. It, see if he, if he likes something like that, you know, have have him start experimenting. I know it sounds dangerous, but sometimes, you know, having the guy, the, the fussy eaters experiment, they can come up with something going, you know, tasting different things, and all of a sudden they'll come up with something, all right, this I like. And now you have another meal that, you know, should everyone should like. Okay, um, I like to put a pan into very filling tuna with eggs. The um, one of the ones we did was the um, with the macaroni and cheese was also putting a can of tuna in it and a can of peas in it. My grandmother used to do that a lot. Oh yeah, the uh, chili mac rations from. Um, um, Mountain House, my scouts went absolutely ape over it for six years. We go on a camp out, three or four of them want to get the Chili Mac. All right, uh, so when you're working on setting up your prepper pantry, your, or your not your working pantry in the kitchen, if you have room to have a pantry elsewhere, you can do that. Well, let me say Say uh, so in the new house we're in here right now. I'm in one of the far back bedrooms right now is my office. What does this office look like? Well, let me pull my camera here and show you what I got over here. Oh, it's a it's a it's a prepper pantry back here. <laughs> yeah. So I've uh, get the camera sitting right where it's supposed to be. There we go. So. Um, yeah, and we got shelves of I got big wire shelves in here, just loaded with stuff. I got the uh, the can solidators on there to um, rotate through some of the stuff, and then we got others in the kitchen of everything that's in here, in the kitchen and the cupboards in there, and so when that gets low, we pull from in here. <clears throat> Zombie prepper, hey, how's it going? So. Uh, Okay, CR, are you talking about that hat there, my, uh, my top hat from Halloween, the uh, Undertaker's hat? Anyways, um, working your, 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 your pantry in is you start working to figure out, and everyone's done it a little bit, you know, how where things are, how to make it easier, but figure out if you're going to have two places to store stuff, a Prep, uh, prepper pantry or a storage pantry and then your kitchen pantry or working pantry where you're pulling stuff from you don't on the kitchen uh, working pantry you don't have to have as much stuff in there so you can line stuff up uh, and have more items in there but less of each item so you have like you know four cans of chili four cans of baked beans four cans, you know, and you just you know, line up cans and stuff like that. You have the majority in another room. And so uh, an extra bedroom works great. If you're using an extra bedroom as a sewing room or an office, like my wife's using the other bedroom through that door right there, um, the closet there is full of food too. So um, so when she comes up here and she works from, uh, works from here, she doesn't use that closet. It's full of food. She doesn't need to. She just use that as an office and a sewing area. So um, you can make a, a, take advantage of, of other rooms and stuff. Now, I know my wife and I are not normal to a lot of people. Um, the first couple of years we were married, yeah, we went out to the movies a lot, went out to dinner. And then the, sun, the bell kind of hit us both at the same time. It's like, all right, going out to dinner, we're wasting money. We can fix the same dinner at home and splurge a little bit more finer cuts of meat for a lot less than we're paying for at the restaurant. So we cut back on a lot of stuff. We stop stop going out. Um, you know, we very rarely do we go to the, do go to the movies to see something. We wait until it comes out on um, DVD or Blu-ray and we buy it and we watch it here. We make a list of what of the ones we want to buy and get. 
So um, that's one of the things we do as far as we cut back so we can afford the wire rack shelves, the extra food and everything else. Um, there's, you know, what's, I wish I had, I'd taken a video of what my wife has in California at that house. Um, there's a couple of closets that are just full of food storage. There's, uh, got one of the big, um, um, shelf reliance, uh, shelf, uh, can solid. We put all the cans in rotators things, you know, the ones that's, you know, six feet tall, four feet wide and two, uh, 30 inches deep. And we got one, one of those. We got some other, uh, couple deep cabinets in the kitchen, the big number 10 cans of, <coughs> of freeze dried food go in the back. And the stuff we use a lot is in front because those free side cans are good for, you know, 20, 30, 40 years. And yes, we have some that are 50 years old and we've cracked them open and they are still absolutely in perfect good condition. They're made by a company no longer around called Sam Andy and they use nitrogen in there when they filled it. And so, you know, the, the stuff is absolutely still delicious, still good after 50 years. Uh, we make sure that we inherited it all from my parents, all the, all the Sam Andy, uh, uh, food and stuff. Uh, let's see things else here to help ideas. People. Okay. Uh, oh, Allie can stewed, uh, tomatoes today. Cool. And one of the things, yeah, like right now we've, uh, uh oh, um, when was it? Saturday, um, Cal Ranch. It's a store in here, sort of like Tractor Supply, only a lot better because we have a Tractor Supply down at, uh, in uh, Pocatello as well. We had a, a big sale go on, hey, and I bought some new shirts. This is one of them. But uh, they also had the uh, the Kerr canning jars on sale, and I grabbed a couple of cases of quartz wide mouths. And so, you know, I grabbed several more of those. The, what's interesting is, or interesting, it's, it's frustrating. The way they package the canning jars now, where they got that little itty bitty thin cardboard box that sits in with a plat and the, with the uh, plastic that's sucked up around it. Once you open it up, those card, those card, flimsy cardboard boxes, you know, they're dangerous. You can actually lose your jars because it's, it's you know, uh, flimsy and stuff. That's why I, I get a lot of the boxes. Um, <clears throat> they're, they're those type boxes from Sam's Club and Costco. And I probably got about 20 of them sitting um, by the dining room table in there uh, that I've picked up. And so once I, I want to have at least one of those cases for one of those boxes for each case of jars so that once we... So when we crack those jars open, start using them, we have a strong box to put them in. I don't have to worry about losing the jars and stuff. Um, oh, Kathy, cool. All right. Made guava jelly, favorite other jellies. Yeah, my wife's been making um, no sugar... Um, Oh, it's a, basically, she's it's a no sugar, no pectin uh, jams and jellies from the apricot, peaches, and some of the other fruit trees there in California. And she goes, yeah, you, it, it takes a long time. It's, it's a long process off water bath process, but um, no sugar, and it tastes great. That in mind, check the labels uh, if you happen to store. You know, the, the Smucker Strawberry Jam, the Welch's Grape Jelly, the number two or sometimes number one ingredient on there is high fructose corn syrup. Tis, ticks me off no end because I remember when Smucker's bragged about not using high fructose corn syrup 20 years ago. They got some, uh, got some money grubbing people that have come up through the ranks and uh, made it into CEO positions and, and making the decisions on how to increase their profits so they can get their bonuses. 
and so they use instead of using natural sugar, they're using that high fructose corn crap. All right, um, and remember, high fructose corn syrup is way different and more deadlier than plain corn syrup. They've really processed it, and it causes problems. And um, Nurse Amy over at uh, doomandbloom.net or our Doc Bones Nurse Amy YouTube channel, she has, has tracked a lot of the problems with um, certain things that people get where either the parents, or I should say the, the mother, was eating a lot of high fructose, uh, high fructose corn syrup foods, or the young kids were eating a lot of high fructose corn syrup foods in their baby foods and stuff as kids, and they develop certain um, development issues. Yeah, the roaming prepper. Hey, yeah. I've heard that. I'm not. I'm not a uh, Coke or a Pepsi fan at all. Um, but yeah, I, I, some of the guys at work really prefer it. Uh, the guys at work when I worked construction really preferred it. And some of the guys when they went home brought a lot of it back across the border and they filled all the paperwork. Yeah, I'm taking this for my family party, and they you know, you know weren't getting tagged for it. But uh, yeah, because it was stuff. Yeah, you know, they they really like that uh, real sugar stuff. Uh, where, where to go? I just I, I comment. I was going to click. Okay. Hey, Shadow Scout. Yeah. The um, I got several emails today from uh, Northern California about uh, what's going on with the electrical grid there. I'm going to talk more about it on Thursday night. But Steve, of course, there are trainers sent out for his members only uh, stuff, photos that of the stuff he was, the, the text alerts he was getting from um, Southern California Edison. Yeah. Let's see anything else here in the chat. Okay, I'm gonna throw the. Uh, there's the link again. If some if somebody wants to uh, come up. But yeah, it's uh, working on your pre prepper pantry. It's not easy because you kind of got stuff in places already, and you got to figure out. You know, if you're changing some things around, sometimes it, th it throws you for a loop. Um, when I moved in here, my wife is, my wife is still staying in California. She's got several more years of uh, working there before she retires. And so I'm getting the place ready. So I started setting the kitchen. I'm, I'm thinking, all right, I know that when she comes to visit, if the kitchen's not similar to California, she's going to get annoyed with me. So I spent time trying to set it up like she did. What does she do? When I'm not, the, uh, the first six months I was away from there, she changed around the kitchen around. And didn't tell me. So I set this one up the way it used to be. She comes up here. Why did you say, oh, I changed it. <laughs> so she changed it around again here to match, kind of match the other one. And we just, you know, it's the best we could. And because the, the, the layout is different. So every house is laid out is different. So you have to work on stuff. Hey, fat man prepper. Um, so we're going to, um, so my wife and I are working on how we're doing it. And since we got the extra bedrooms here that we're using for food storage, we're only keeping in the kitchen the stuff we need to. And right now we got a lot of extra pots, pans, cooking utensils, waffle irons, all that other stuff in the kitchen that um, if we were thinking about adding some more shelves in there in some of the areas where we took some of the things out. And if we do that, uh, we'll be re re it'll be redesigning our entire the way the entire kitchen pantry is set up. Oh, Doreen's in the Silicon Valley. You have my condolences on the on the on the rent and house payment prices down there. Yeah, my wife's up in uh, Contra Costa County. Um, so. Uh, and PG&E is, you know, just totally jerking everybody around there in the San Francisco Bay Area. <coughs> All right. Uh, hang on. Saw a question that someone's answering a question. I want to see what it was. Oh, yeah. Um, Tibor. Yeah, it's just, you know. 
and you know what's part, what's part of the bad part of it is some of those plastics showing up are coming from the stored foods like the plastic bottles of mayonnaise the plastic bottles of ketchup mustard and stuff stuff's leaching out of the plastic and water bottles those little little soft water bottles those things leach crap like you would not believe yeah so uh can canning food in jars is one of the things and that's like on on the shelves here uh, the only the only tomato sauces i'm buying here come in jars even the ones in cans the ones in the cans have a plastic liner sprayed on the inside of them to keep the uh it from uh the uh acid in the tomatoes from eating away at the metal okay let's try to see cane sugar cookies okay all right all righty so Oh, we only got uh, eight minutes to go here. So, um, but if, I know people like Kaylin in the in, in the in the chat here, and Fat Man Prepping. They live in apartments, and being in apartments, they are really limited on what they can do for their food storage space. Um, I know my daughter when she was uh, going to the university up here in, in uh, Rexburg in their apartment <clears throat> they set the bed up on um blocks so they didn't have a regular frame under it and they had more space and they gave it more out more height space under it and they got those clear plastic containers that you get at um wally world or target that are uh, about i guess they're about 18 inches wide but they're about three foot long or longer for, that can put the rolls of um Christmas wrapping paper in well they put the food supplies in it and just slid those under the bed so they just slide it out pop the lid and they just go through their cans and stuff there so um there you know those that are living in the apartments have uh an entirely different oh kathy d lives in an apartment too hey rachel rachel's working from hawaii and so, hey, how's the, Rachel, how's the little one doing? And so living in an apartment, you have to be thinking even more outside the box to get more things into the apartment box. So there's a lot of, uh, oh, Shadow Scout also lives in an apartment. So we got a lot of apartment dwellers here. Um, some apartments are really tiny. Some have a little bit more room, but, uh, trying to, you know, for me, I only lived in an apartment for a couple of times when I was uh, out of high school and I was moving around, you know, going around, around the United States doing things and, you know, spent a couple months here, you know, six months there, whatever. And the, um, all but one of the apartments I lived in were puny. And I froze. There was one I would, it was great. It was a great apartment. It was huge. Um, we got it dirt cheap and it had like five bedrooms and a big, huge, um, um, living room. That's more like a, more like a dining hall. And it was great, but I was only there for, uh, four months and uh it was that was in punxsutawney pennsylvania and you know if i had an apartment like that i wouldn't mind i mean that that apartment was almost bigger than this house and this house is 26 feet wide by um 76 feet long so um <clears throat> Kathy says, I have a patio, so I need to plant and grow food. What I uh, what I best know. Kathy, check out, if you're not subscribed to Kaylin Strain, Kaylin, if you're still in here, throw your link in the chat. Or somebody else, throw Kaylin's link in the chat. Check out Kaylin Strain. She's growing, uh, she has a garden growing on her patio. This is the second year she's doing it. 
check out uh actually it's not a patio it's a balcony so check out um uh kaylin's uh kaylin's there so kaylin throw your link in there for kathy all right So she, because uh, Kathy on uh, Kaylin has some has some great videos on what she's growing there as well. And I know Fat Man Prepper uh, is uh, is uh, raising um, quail in his apartment, or at least he was. All right, so we got a couple minutes to go, so I'm going to wrap this up here. Let me uh, get my uh, list up here. All right, so coming up here, um, tomorrow I will, I may be over on um, uh, on Laura's uh, live stream tomorrow evening. Uh, it's Hedgehog's Homestead, and then um, in the evening, Thursday evening at eleven fifty-five Eastern, I go live here on Gray Man Prepping for the Midnight Ride. And it's going to be open chat. And so we have a lot of people up on the panel. We're just going to talk about stuff. Uh, it's been it's been kind of curious. This will be number 15. The last three, we've been talking food and gardening. All right. So, uh, and we've gone on the last three. Once once I got uh, Carol Fisher's and those lives up and Barry up there, we go for hours because the conversation just feeds and it just goes great. Good night, Howie. And uh, so that's what's coming up there uh, for me. Friday, Courtney's doing at 12 Eastern, the uh, Blue Ribbon Canning Panel with um, Rebel Canners. And some other people are going live over the weekend. Um, Courtney at Wide Family Farm has started the Wide, the, uh, Wide Family Farm Weight Loss Challenge. We got two teams going on. Laura at um, um, Hedgehog Homestead is his one team captain. Carol Fishers and Lowe's Lives is the other team captain. I'm on Laura's team. And uh, we, we had our, our first official weigh in on Sunday. It's going to go to um, November 5th. And so it's just going to be a two, uh, two months. And then we're going to see how, and then we're going to, I guess, it, uh, Courtney's thinking about firing it back up after the holidays in January. And then we're going to see who's gone back up, who's able to keep it off. And then we're going to start doing it with weekly uh, weigh-ins uh, thereafter. The only ones that know our weights are the team captains, except for one, a couple like me. We make videos and we put it out there for everyone to see. So if I start gaining weight, I want you guys to uh, give me a ration and just, you know, Ride me to, to lose weight. All right. So um, there we go. All right. Um, all right. So I believe that's Kaylin's uh, YouTube channel. All righty. Uh, so coming up next Monday uh, on Camp Patton Family Compound at 8 o'clock Eastern time, the topic is hunting season. Are you ready? uh to go harvest your uh extra food so we've talked about um hunting season uh the different uh rules and regulations per states we're going to try to get feedback from all the different states um i know like uh for here if my son wants to come from california to hunt up here he has to hunt with somebody from up here uh, if he wants to get a, uh, a hunting license to hunt up here, but uh, but there's uh, there's all sorts of different you know and then hunt, hunting season, fishing seasons, different seasons for different animals, different seasons for uh, bear, deer, elk, moose, whatever. And I know in California, even just for deer, they had a bunch of different zones, and the different zones had different starting times sometimes. And they had different amounts of licenses that were given for different zones. All righty. Uh, then next Tuesday here. Oh, wow. We got 100 degree weather now. Guess what we're talking about next Tuesday? Think about winter. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to start planning for the winter now. So that's what's going to be talking about here next Tuesday. 
All righty, folks. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you for making all the comments in the side chat and um, talking things up. And yeah, I'll see you. Um, hopefully, I'll see you Thursday night, 11.55 Eastern, here on Gray Man Prepping for the Midnight Ride. Otherwise, hopefully, I'll see you uh, Monday at 8 o'clock Eastern for the, uh, the uh, Monday Night Fireside Chat on Camp Patton Family Compact. All righty. So as always, stay happy no matter what life throws at you. Stay safe. Don't go out and do anything foolish. Keep adding to your preps, water, food, medicines, and skills.